With Cobalt CPP and Silly Tavern, you can enjoy fully local and private character AI-like experience on your PC. I will show you how to quickly set up all this in just a few short steps, and at the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to load up and create any characters you like, be it for conversing with your local personal AI assistant or for local AI roleplay. Let's begin. First, let's quickly explain why do we need two separate programs for this. The reason is quite simple. While Silly Tavern is just a UI, that is, a user interface frontend that we'll be using to interact with the models we'll be hosting, the models themselves will be hosted using Cobalt CPP, which will be our software backend. Both applications will be connected using an API connection, which we'll configure in just about two clicks total. While you can use Cobalt CPP only, which does feature its own user interface, you'll be missing out on quite a few important features if you do this. Oh, and it's also important to mention that you can use Silly Tavern with many different software backends rather than just Cobalt CPP, and this includes the Text Generation Web UI, which I already have a tutorial for right here on the channel. And one last important thing before we begin. For all this to function correctly, you will need at least 6GB of VRAM on your GPU. Although Cobalt CPP is fully capable of CPU-only inference where the model is loaded into your system RAM, it is much much slower than running the model on your GPU and fully within the constraints of your GPU VRAM. The installation process in this tutorial will be done on a clean fresh install of Windows 11 in a virtual machine that makes use of a GPU with exactly 8GB of video memory. So let's get to the first part, which is installing the Cobalt CPP backend. Go to the official Cobalt CPP GitHub repository, the link is in the description below, and head over to the Releases tab. You can find it on the right. There you'll need to select an appropriate Cobalt CPP version to download. For Windows systems with recent NVIDIA GPUs, the version name will start with Cobalt CPP underscore CU, which is short for CUDA. If you're on Windows 10 or 11 and you're not sure which one to pick, and you don't have an AMD GPU on your system, pick this one. Versions for Mac and Linux are also appropriately described. Once you've downloaded the .exe file, double-click it to run it. You might have to click through a user access control prompt as shown here. If the application refuses to start, make sure to add it to your Windows Defender exceptions list. And that's pretty much it when it comes to Cobalt CPP. If your instance of Cobalt doesn't start up, it might be that you've picked a wrong version for your system. The descriptions of all of the different software versions are available in the GitHub repository as well as down below. And yes, as I've mentioned before, you could start using Cobalt CPP right away, loading up your favorite model and starting to chat. The software does feature its own simple user interface, a few of them actually, but trust me when I'm saying that the sheer convenience and wide feature set of Silly Tavern will make our efforts really worth it in the end. For now you can safely exit out of Cobalt CPP and we'll get to installing Silly Tavern. First we'll have to install Git. If you don't already have it on your system, visit the official Git website. Again, the link will be in the description below. Select and download an appropriate installer, in my case this will be the 64-bit installer, and then proceed through the installation process selecting all of the default options. At the very end, feel free to deselect the View Release Notes checkbox. Now we can proceed to install Silly Tavern, and that will be done using a neat one-liner command which we can find in the Silly Tavern GitHub repository. The first part of this command will clone all of the Silly Tavern files from its GitHub repository, and the second part will launch the installation script. Using the Windows File Explorer, move to the location you wish to install Silly Tavern in. Then click on the address bar like so, type in CMD and press Enter. This will open a new terminal window in that location. After you've done that, you can paste the command chain from the GitHub repository, press enter, and the installation process should start automatically. As the installation proceeds, you'll be asked for a few inputs. First of them will be agreeing to the software's terms of service. You can do that by simply pressing Y and then enter when prompted. And the second one of them should be a question whether or not you want the desktop shortcuts to be created for the application. Also, during the whole installation process, a few additional user access control windows might appear. Be sure to click yes on all of them. Once the initial installation of Silly Tavern software requirements is finished, the installer will prompt you to start the actual Silly Tavern software installation process. At the very end of the process, you'll be asked if you want to start the software right away. This is where a small issue can come up. If you didn't have Node.js installed on your system and the installer took care of setting it up for you, if you decide to start Silly Tavern right away from the installer, you might get the node command not found in path error. This is most likely because of the path values not getting updated in the local terminal environment after installation. You can easily fix that by simply restarting the Silly Tavern launcher and then selecting the first or second option that is update and start Silly Tavern or start Silly Tavern. Once Silly Tavern has successfully started, we need just one more thing to begin chatting with the AI, and that is the AI model itself. In this video, I won't get into much detail about choosing the right open source large language model for you, but instead I'll give you an example of a model that is bound to work on most 8GB VRAM GPUs out there. Later on you can experiment with loading and testing many new different models by yourself, as as of now there are hundreds of different open source ones available all over the internet. 
The model we'll be using here is the Rewiz Nemo 12B Instruct. I'll leave a link to its Hugging Face repository in the description below. In said repository, go over to the Files and Versions tab and select the small 4-bit quantized version of the model. As you can see, 12 billion weights in 4-bit quantization weigh about 7 GB here. This means that provided no other programs are hogging the VRAM, you should be able to fit the model and its context window within 8 GB of video memory on your GPU. Simplifying things very much here, a good rule of thumb is to always pick models that are smaller in size than your overall GPU VRAM. Once the model is downloaded, we can proceed. Now, as you might have guessed, we need to start both Cobalt CPP and Silly Tavern and get them to run at the same time. Cobalt CPP can be started using the exe file we used in the very beginning, and if you ever need to start Silly Tavern again, you can use the launcher.bat file which is located in its installation directory. In Cobalt CPP, navigate to the Quick Launch tab, and there, near the GGUF text model field, click on the Browse button. Select your newly downloaded model, click on Open, and then click the green Launch button. As the model files are pretty large, this process can take quite a bit. Be prepared to wait even a few minutes depending on your system hardware. Once the model loads, the Cobalt CPP user interface will open. If everything went smoothly, you can now type in a few test prompts to see if the model is functioning correctly. After you're done playing around, take note on which port Cobalt CPP is running. This will be important later. You can now close the Cobalt AI browser window. Make sure that you're not closing the terminal running Cobalt CPP in the background. Now start up Silly Tavern if you haven't already, and let's get to the API connection configuration. Make sure that Cobalt CPP is still running in the background. In Silly Tavern, in the connection tab, select the options as shown. The API should be set to text completion and the API type to Cobalt CPP. The optional API key field can be left empty. And now the important part. In the API address field, you need to enter the exact address under which the Cobalt CPP backend is hosted on your computer. While in this kind of setup, the first localhost part of the address will be exactly the same in most cases, the port at the end might sometimes be different. For instance, if the default Cobalt CPP port is already taken by some other process. If you've forgotten on which port the Cobalt CPP backend has opened its server, you can check Check it in the Cobalt CPP terminal window. Tick the checkbox that says derive context size from backend and then you can click on the connect button. If Cobalt CPP is running in the background and you've entered the right API address, the connection indicator will light up green and you will be able to see your model name right next to it. So let's begin our first chat. Head over to the Character Select tab which should be the last tab in the top row, and then select our default character which for now should be the only character in there. While you are chatting with the character, two things happen. While Cobalt CPP is handling the model inference in the background, Silly Tavern is responsible for handling the character prompt data, as well as giving you a neat interface for modifying the model inference settings. But there's just one more important thing here. As you can see for now, the UI is serving as the character's response only once it's been fully generated. To let Silly Tavern display messages word by word, or rather token by token, go to the Silly Tavern settings here and tick the streaming checkbox. Now you can see that the model output is displayed as it generates, which is much more convenient. The last thing I want to show you here is how to add custom characters. And Silly Tavern makes it really simple. The best way to go about this is to go to a site like aicharactercards.com, use their browser to find a character you like, and then simply copy its Silly Tavern card ID, which you can see here. Then inside the Silly Tavern character select menu, click on the import character from external URL option. Next, paste the character card ID in this window. Now you can select your character and begin a new chat. Of course, you can also import characters from JSON files, create new customized characters, or modify the existing ones. That's pretty much it when it comes to the very basics of Cobalt CPP with Silly Tavern. The amount of customizability and the many extensions that can further improve your chatting experience are only a few reasons why Silly Tavern with Cobalt CPP are this popular. I hope I was able to help you with the setup. If I did, please do leave a like or a sub and check out my other videos on free local open source AI software. Until next time, bye!